Right, we're back on the Kevin and Fred show, and today I am joined by my friend Fee Gentry. Fee, how are you doing today? I am doing great. How's everybody doing out there? We're doing great, great. Awesome. Where are you, where are you coming at us from today? I'm coming to you just a little north of Austin, Texas. So I'm in Round. I'm in Round Rock, Texas. That's You're in I'm Round right. Rock. Okay, yeah, I yeah. know Round Rock because when mm-hmm. I first met our mutual friend Nolly, he lived in Round Rock, and yep. I used to go to his house all the, all the time there in Round Rock. So yep. that's. That's how I met you was through Nolly. Remember yeah, it is. Uh, about about almost three years ago. That's yeah. how we met. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, teaching a class there in in Austin. Um, well, awesome, Fee. I'm so glad that we finally got the chance to connect. And uh, again, like you know, like I told you, I like to do this because it allows me to put people on the hot seat and just pepper them with questions, and it's socially acceptable. So I thought, you know, just let's start off with you. I, um, first of all. How long have you been in real estate? Let's start there. And I'm going to kind of go back. I'm going to, I might work backwards and I might jump backwards and forwards in time, but how long have you been in real estate? I literally have been in real estate. This is going on my 17th year, believe it or not. Like I can't even believe it, but yeah, 17 years in real estate. Yeah. yeah. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. What made you decide uh, to jump into real estate? Dude, honestly, it was plan F. I mean, honestly, <laughs> plan, I love it. I love it. Was that. Plan, it was plan F. Like I had, I, you know, my background is in rehabilitation, sports and marketing. I owned a sports event marketing company, you know, post rehabilitation centers, fitness. That's all been my, you know, my past. And so I was in physical therapy school, had a total meltdown in PT school because I was just burnt out. I was running a business and and just burning the candle at both ends, plus going to school, you know, sitting over dead cadavers, you know, and I just, and I just said, you know, like, this is not the life that I want. So my family did an intervention, brought me, brought me home and, and said, uh, Hey, you know, my mom was like, uh, you can come, you know, you're burnt out. You're working too hard. Come sit at my house and watch my house be built. Cause my mom was, we were from California, but I was living in Texas at the time. My mom was like, Hey, you know, come watch, make sure my house is being built correctly. And I was watching it. it was, they were doing us. So like they were, I think they were sucking up and the real, the realtor who's supposed to be watching the you know, over, overseeing the, the construction of the home. He, they were, uh, that was the site realtor was doing a terrible job. And so the commissioner of Texas uh, real estate got involved in it. And her name is Avis Wukash from Keller Williams. And she happened Whoa. to be one of the owners of K- FKW. That's literally how I, she was like, you'd be really good in the business of real estate. And I was like, I didn't go to school for real estate. You know what I mean? Like that was anyone anywhere like plan a b c d e <laughs> and so it turned out being plan f and so she's like you should get your license and and try it and, and here we go that's so <laughs> funny years later yeah so two years later <laughs> i know so many people like that's somebody said like hey you should consider real estate and that was the thing that really got them thinking about actually doing it yeah yeah i had no clue i mean literally i knew i didn't know the difference between a lockbox or a listing i had like i had no clue what either one of those were and um I, but I knew marketing and I knew how to let some seats. And so my first year I sold like 39 homes, you know, and everyone's like, Oh, you know, I got an award. You know, I got this, uh, I came like sec- uh, silver, like the silver medal. Cause I started oh, out yeah. with uh, Keller Williams. I got, I got a silver medal. And I was pissed about getting a silver medal because I'm like competitive, like, right? Why didn't I get the gold? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And they're like, you did really, really well. And I was like, Oh, so, so that's how it started from there. Yeah. That's awesome. So I was going to say, I'm sure your background though, with having the other businesses prior to real estate that had to help you and kind of give you an advantage. So that, you know, kind of hit the ground running. I mean, to sell, you, did you say 39 homes in your first year? Like that's, yeah. that's substantial. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for some, in a small town, like I knew nobody, like the only person I knew that was buying a house was my mom. <laughs> like, I mean, like, no, I mean, I knew nobody in that town, nobody. Yeah. So, so no context no database i just did direct response marketing and i had people like tell me you can't do that you know like with, with marketing <laughs> they were you know, you know they're flagging my posts and all this well not they didn't have posts back then but advertising and, and marketing uh because so was it get, mostly print that you were doing back, at that back time then two, yeah 2004 is doing print but i was also doing like things on like aol and little like community things. really yeah yeah so it was like so i was doing early stage uh, marketing even on the internet back then yeah dang so it's okay so t- so tell me more about that like how was that was that just natural to you because of your prior business experience yeah, to do that be, because it came through the sport because i owned a, i owned a business called hometown sports um marketing and so it was so we registered it was through the early days we were doing online registration of, of athletes for like camps and clinics because like moms and dads are too busy to go to ymca and like so i understood about online marketing so we would 
actually have advertise, advertise when they were registering their kids for like sports events. So I knew that was like these built-in audiences. And so I was doing like AOL or like, you know, t email marketing and all that kind of stuff. So I'd start doing that like early on intuitively, not knowing that there was like this thing. And then there's like online communities and online forums. And so I just start talking about real estate and these little online communities and forums for people who are looking for people to come fix their house or something, you know, just, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was just natural. Yeah. So how has that evolved today? I mean, so, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a big jump. It's been 17 years. So, and so yeah, much has yeah, changed yeah. with technology and, and that, that space is so, you know, a lot, a lot more crowded now with, uh, with competition, but what, like, are you still using those same types of techniques in different ways? Like, how do you generate your business today? Today, I generate my business um, and here, and here's where it is. It's, it's still using technology. I've never, I've never door knocked. I'm a six foot tall black woman. I'm not going to go door knocking in Texas. <laughs> just, just, just say it, right? <laughs> so I just never like that. I always believe in attraction. I'm, you know, I'm a Frank Kern girl, Dan Kennedy, you know, For just sure. direct response kind of thing. And so um, today, yeah, I still use those, you know, Facebook things and live events. Again, uh, habit, you know, creature of habit, using things that have worked in the past. Live events put butts in seats. And so my demographic is new home construction. So my primary customer really are builders. So that's the first one. And then my secondary niche are like women. Um, the second fastest niche of buyers and sellers in this marketplace are, are women. And people don't realize that professional women who make over 100,000 a year or senior women who are 55, who like 55 and up, who are like, I'm retiring, we're downsizing, um, getting divorced, or, or they, you know, or they, I mean, they could be married, but most of the time women are the decision makers and drivers when they're selling their homes. So I'm marketing to those particular women in Facebook groups, in meetups, live events, same thing running. I, I still run ads, but not as much. I'm, well, I take that back. I'm running YouTube ads right now and some Google ads, but those are the specific niches and demographics that I run those, uh, run my marketing to. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to come and I cut this up into a few things here because you, yeah. you, you piqued my interest on a couple of different things. Okay. So it's clear to me, you understand uh, demographics and kind of going into the niches, but when you just said the way you kind of almost um, nonchalantly mentioned, while well, I'm running some YouTube ads, is that, is that like you're testing out? Are you one of those people that you're always testing out different forms of, of things? Like what, 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 tell me more about that. Yeah, I'm a dabbler. I mean, but I don't, I used to have an ad agency. So I used to do it, do some of that stuff myself when Facebook ads were really working before they got so, so saturated. Yeah. <laughs> so now I just hire it out. Right. So, but, so yeah, I have a team of, of, of guys who were actually running some YouTube ads for me. Um, and, and then I've got, I'm not really running Facebook ads as much, but I'm running like challenges. So like right now I'm in the middle of running a, a real estate agent challenge because I'm really focused more on agent attraction because the business, the marketplace here in Austin is ridiculous. I mean, it's really competitive. So I'm really more so helping my agents on my, in my uh, revenue share group and on my informal unteam team, they're doing more of the of, oh. of, of that so i'm feeding them more of the the, the leads but yeah but, but it's you but it's youtube yeah it's definitely youtube and and uh and google ads that, that's awesome so two things i want to i want to talk about there so look, before i go into the to like the revenue share group and the agents that you're helping are you um are you still coming up do you come up with like the copy and are, are you do are you is that your no i don't want to no. say your job or how, how do you where do you direct on that stuff like where do I, you what I, part do you control yeah i control the vision right i'm a visionary i'm not always so much great on i'm not the greatest integrator you know if you ever read that book oh, yeah. uh, rocket fuel right yep. so i'm i'm definitely the visionary and so i can integrate when needs need to be so i'm setting here so i'm paying attention to the market and so there's certain at, like there's like add an imagery that they put together for me or certain words that that connect with people so yeah that's that's where i'm directing it but the ads themselves those guys i always want those guys to use the tried and true methods that are working now for them but but yeah i just pro provide the vision of like hey wouldn't it be cool if we did this or this is what i see like the major home builders do right but and then knock them off. How do I get in front of their audience <laughs> in their in their stream of water? Oh, I love it. I love <laughs> and that's it. what I'm, that's what I'm always trying to do. That kind of stuff. Yeah. That's cool. So so you mentioned too, you're spending more of your time now um, on agent attraction and, and helping your. I think you said unteam, yeah. uh, which is funny. That's my my buddy Eric, who is uh, who is also here at EXP, calls it as well the unteam, uh, or I think he calls it the unbrokerage. Um, okay. But say, you know, same situation. So you're helping now, you're more focused on helping them to go out and generate more of their own business too. So that way they can do that. Do you, 
Do you like that part of it, helping other agents go out and and win versus just going, hey, how many more deals can I get? Is it or is it just different for you? Tell me about that. Yeah, like you said, after this is year seventeen, so I'm at a different place in my life personally and professionally, and so I don't want to be out there on that hamster wheel, right? And so I want to start. So my goal is to grow the revenues and help change other change help other people change their lives. So it's leverage, right? So I'm at that point in my life where I want to do that uh, is to grow, you know domestically and internationally, but um, help those agents realize their own dreams, their own dreams and, and those who want to stay on that, you know, generating that revenue on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and I, you- and I still sell, I mean, I still do some sales. Like I had you know, closings last week, but for the most part, I want to have my legacy, like legacy be that I've helped a thousand women or a thousand agents, you know, grow grow uh, their business yeah, exponentially. That's, that's my five-year plan anyways. <laughs> that's awesome. I love, I love it. And let me see if I, if I remember correctly, you joined EXP in what, 2017? To, yep. Yep. Next month, two, oh, next month will be four years. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. Next month or not quite next month, but the year, the month after will be three for me. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. time flies, right? When you're having yeah, fun. Yeah, man. I can't believe it. So obviously, uh, I want to get into this because so one of the things and the reason I was really excited to to chat with you about is because you are the one that founded the one exp and like started that initiative. Can you are you can you share more about that with me? Like what what was it inside you that made you decide to to like step out and do that? Because I think I I don't know. I just I feel like that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. Like you're really kind of putting yourself out there when you do something like that. Exactly. And I was reluctant. Let me tell you how it first started. It started with me founding the Black XP Network, which I did not want to do. It was just that we'd be at like d- different types of events, um, whether it be like, you know, like a Brent Gove event or a local event. And I was like, man, there are decisions being made about agents who don't look like me, who um, women, people of color, et cetera. And I was like, man, you know, I'd love for to see more people be, be present and have representation and see the table. And I'm not talking about tokenism, but just be there and like to hear people working at that high, high level. And so Jason Guessing, honestly, the person who kind of encouraged me was Jason Guessing. I'm like, Jason, dude, I love we that just man. Had, yeah, I love him. I was like, Jason, we just had the election. I don't want to be, we were top golf, right? We were playing top golf. And I was like, I don't want to be in that. And he was like, no, he goes, you need to start like the Black East Peak Network. And then Julie Nelson, hit, she had started the Pride Network. So like fast forward, it was Christmas time. They were like, Hey, you haven't started that 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 network yet. And I kept on waiting for somebody else to do it, but I know how I am. I'm kind of like a starter of things, and so, doom, boom, I blew it up and started the Black East Peak Network. We're at three thousand agents plus now for the Black East Peak Network. I literally, but I'm a California girl, so I grew up where I think diversity, you know, diversity is where you come from and in your background and your, if you're a single mom, I think it's all of those things. So I had this bigger vision. I literally got on and was chatting Glenn up in, in our workplace chat. I love that, by the way. Like, that's what I try to tell people. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, I'll be on workplace and I'll get a message from Glenn or I'll send Glenn a message. And like, there's conversations happen and like cool things come up like that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's 1130 at night. I'm chatting Glenn and I said, Glenn, I have a vision about this diversity, you know, diversity and inclusion initiative for EXP. And he said, Fee, you're kidding me. He said, on my Q2 goals, I was thinking about the exact same thing. And he goes, and I wanted you to run it. So what are, so me and Glenn, 1130 at night, we're going back and forth. And we start like, so we just start like six weeks. He starts mind mapping. We, he and I are just mind mapping of what we want EXP to look like in the future. And we just, he and I just went on this wild ride for like, and we just start bringing other groups in and and I said, I want it to be, you know, this and that. And he said, I want it to be this. And we just, he said, but I'm a 50 year old white guy. I can't implement this. And I said, okay, well, let's take it. And so it was me and, and uh, then a, a group of, you know, close other agents. And we founded this diversity inclusion initiative that says that everybody has a place to belong, right? And so, yeah, we have the X's and O's of real estate, but there's different people, whether there's language barriers or, you know, like I said, people coming from different parts of the country or different parts of the world um, and different experiences. And so that's how we started the One XP Diversity Initiative, uh, Diversity Initiative, and and it's just blown up from there. And, so, and that's a part of our core DNA from the, from you know the top down, from Glenn, Jason, Dave Kennard, huge you know, huge supporters. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I love is um, you know first of all, I, hats off to you. Like seriously, mad respect for you for going. 
yeah, okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to go start that. Like, you've got a lot going on. You've got your own businesses going on. You've got your own life. And then you're like, well, hold up. There's something, there's a conversation here that needs to be had. And so I'm going to start it. And it's, you know, even if it took a little prodding from Jason, who is, you know, again, probably one of the <laughs> nicest guys, either one of us have ever, ever met. Right. right. Um, it's, that's, it's still not an easy thing to do, I, but I yeah. love that you, that you sit, that you, that you let it sit there and you, then you, you know, and then you ran with it. You said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Uh, Cause it's, it does, it makes a difference for people. And I think you're right. Like it's not a tokenism thing, but it's a thing of like, Hey, we all need, we all need to be part of these conversations. We all need to be part of the future and shaping where, where we're going. Right. And, and it's, and this is the thing, Kevin, it's like, it's people come to EXP or come to companies for the compensation, you know, for compensation, the 80, 20 model, they also come for, you know, the cloud-based brokerage, you know, how we do our business, but they're staying for community. And the yep. retention part is the biggest part. And when people acknowledge that, that you acknowledge that you see them and that they get to be exactly who they are, that's, that's dollars and cents. And so, especially as we continue to grow domestically and go internationally, dude, that's going to add to our bottom line. And, and what we, and people don't realize even under our diversity and inclusion initiatives, we have senior citizens. Like, so how do we continue to sustain that? think tank of senior citizens, our veterans, our young people. And like right now, I'm, I'm really focused on EXP uh, young professionals because we're old as a, as, a, as a company. We're like about age 58. We need to get more young people into our cloud-based brokerage and have, you know, have real estate become a first-time career choice as opposed to a third or fourth-time career t- choice. That's the diversity that I'm talking about. Like that, the dollars and I cents love that. part of it. Yeah. That goes yeah. deep. And well, and that goes deep. And and it, and it speaks to the fact there are, there's a diverse type of diversity. Like there's all sorts of different backgrounds, like you mentioned, that we all that we all come from. And being able to to have those um, voices are it's just it's just important. So, yeah. all right. So that's cool. So how much like I got? I guess let me ask this question. One last question on the topic, like. What kind of time, like how much time does this take you? Because you're running, you're still sitting, you're like, oh, I had a couple closings last week. You're acting like you don't sell real estate, but you're like, I had a couple closings last week. Then you've got your group of people within EXP that you're helping to grow their business. Um, and I know you got other things going on. So like, what kind of time commitment are you putting towards this versus like running your sales business versus running uh, your, you know, your un team, if you will, with the other agents that you're helping? Dude, it's siloed, but I'd probably say at least 70% of my time. I mean, that's what I, you know, that's a lot of what I do on a day-to-day basis. And, and it, of course, it, you know, it varies from day-to-day, but probably 60 to 70% of my time because I'm Google, right? So people from all over the company, <laughs> they, they, contact, they contact me as Miss Google. And so I'm, I'm honored to serve at this highest level, right, to be able to do that. But like, there's some, you know, I'm having to deal with there's, you know, staff, you know, the diversity, diversity inclusion issues on staff, and there's agents who are having things, problems out in the field and, and in agent attraction stuff. So it, you know, for, cause people don't know about the initiative cause they don't feel comfortable to the, you, you know, they don't feel comfortable like, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm GLBTQ. Does EXP accept that? And like, yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm on the phones with those. It's a lot. It's like, it's all day. It's, it's just a life. It's, it's just the life of it, but it's fun. It's fun. I'm having fun. That's awesome. I love it. I can tell you're having fun. Every time I see you, you're having fun. That's the thing yeah. too. I like about it. you've got that, ener- that energy about you. Um, I can tell that you're actually having fun and you enjoy doing, doing what you do. So that's really cool. And yeah, yeah. it's important. So let me ask you this. So the last year has been very, it's been weird. It's been trying. There's a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs over the last year. Uh, but here we are, you and I are recording this in late April, 2021. Things are almost starting to kind of, I don't want to say go back to normal, but on the way, like, what do you see happening the rest of this year? Or what are some of the things that maybe you're focused on and excited about as we get into the second half of 2021? On a real estate front or on a? Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, all yeah, of the above. yeah, that's an um, open, that's an yeah, open that's question, an open right question there. man. On the real estate side, dude, I don't see the marketplace and I don't see the marketplace getting less inventory right so I, I that part I see that that pent-up frustration and that that or that pent-up demand is still is just out there so on the real so I'm I'm excited about the agent attraction that's what I've turned my, I've, I've turned my focus <laughs> on the too. agent attraction side right I mean that's really what is but I'm that's also, where it's at right I'm, yeah that's what that's where it's at for us on and we have that opportunity um, but I'm excited that we we have that we've 
come across that we come through this pandemic like we've all been through something like in 2020 like together so i'm i'm really excited and hopeful about those of us who are coming together like in finding your people it's like really fun now that we've been through 2020 we're in 2021 and we've got this drum beat to kind of come meet your people like and, and we all are going toward this collective better world because honestly let's just be honest the world wasn't so great it was okay right beforehand but now it really puts into perspective what our society really values and what's important to us and then we could focus on that and serve people at higher levels and and see where they are so that, oh, that, that's what i'm excited about yeah. that's so true if you just hit something for me so you, and you don't even know this but so on the way in today um so i'm really i personally i'm really interested in blockchain technology and cryptocurrency and kind of the future of where that goes and so i was re-listening to a podcast from tim ferris in 2017 ooh, believe ooh. it um and he asked this question about bubbles and i and i know we weren't just talking about bubbles but he, we, we, in this particular question he said you know are bubbles necessarily a bad thing because what tends to happen or one perspective of bubbles and I'm not relating this to, to a real estate bubble, so please don't hear that, listener. But what tends to happen is when there's bubbles and they burst, typically some good things come out of that because it forces people to go back in and create goods and services to effectively bring back the value, work back the value of what was there and, and, and what created the bubble in the first place. So in a lot of ways, if we looked at, say, the last 12, 13 months as a bubble of life, of time and history, maybe there's a whole lot of good that comes out of that because there is a lot of new good things coming out of what's happened, even some of the really terrible stuff over the last year that hopefully will help bring back more value to, you know, human race. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Maybe we'll care more about each other, love each other a little right? better. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Wouldn't exactly. that, I mean, that would, wouldn't would, be bad. That yeah, would not be bad. Be, wouldn't that be a foreign concept for us, right? No kidding. <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah, well, yeah. let me ask you this. So um, as we start to, cl to close up, what what should I have asked you? Like, what, what are you excited about? Or is there anything else that maybe I should have asked you, whether it's about kind of getting to know you better or just anything else that you want to share with the listeners today? Man, like one of the things that I really am excited about and been working on lately is about global responsibility, like kind of on that theme, right? and yeah. social responsibility, um, that we can do good and do well as a business, right? As business owners. And so I'm more into movement and cause-based businesses. Because one of the reasons I came to eXp was because I was, before I came to eXp, I was unfulfilled. I wasn't living my life's purpose. I was transactional instead of transform, you know, instead of transformative. And I think that's where people are moving. And that's what I'm really, really excited about is in the real estate space and the other business spaces, because we're seeing it in other industries that people now come to companies and, and collaborate with people that are, have things that are bigger than them. And so that's what I've been really, really working on. Um, and I've been working on it in, with EXP in the real estate space. I've also been working on it in, it, the, in, in developing behind the scenes and you guys, will, by the time this is aired, you'll probably hear a little bit more about it, but we're developing a sports entertainment and influencers division. And so that's important, right? For us to, for us to and it's not just for the sake of, you know, just servicing that niche, but athletes have revolutionized um, business and sports, right? In companies. And so now they're, you know, they have foundations, they've got, they've got, you know, this, co you know, this corporate, you know, and companies have this corporate responsibility. We can do the exact same thing in our industry. So that's what I'm really, really excited about is attracting those movement and cause-based agents to this company. And in that's, my, in our business. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's my jam. That's what I'm excited about. That's so awesome. We're gonna have to talk about this more offline too. <laughs> it's why it's one of my beliefs that I feel like in a lot of ways, we as, as real estate agents and brokers around the country, around the world are starting to realize not unlike professional athletes have realized over the last five or 10 years that we have way more power and control over our future and influence than we ever knew. Um, and that's, you know, so it doesn't surprise me that, that, that you and EXP are working on something along those lines. Cause it's like, that's what this company is all about personally so, is my belief. So fee, thank you so much for the person or people who want to learn more about you or follow you. Like what's the best way for, for people to do that? Man, catch me on, you know, Facebook or the gram, you know, fee gentry, anything, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter is all F E E at fee gentry, you know? G-E-N-T-R-Y. Peace. Awesome. Peace
Yeah. That's easy. Well, and we'll, yeah. we'll link to that in the show notes. And V, I just want to say thank you for taking the time today. I know you're busy and I uh, really appreciate you taking some time to chat with us. Well, thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Thanks. Absolutely, Fee. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you next week.